Okay, everyone, we're now joined by number 11 ranked UFC lightweight, Edson Barbosa. Hi, Edson, how are you? I'm very good, how are you? Good, we're gonna start with a question from Danny Segura from MMA Junkie. Danny, go ahead. Edson, how's it going? Uh, curious, this is your first time down to 145, man. How are you feeling uh, during the weight cut? How has this whole process been uh, getting down, you know, 10 more pounds than normally? Uh, I do the same thing I do in, when I make 155, but I start 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> the same feeling. A couple more hours, it's the same feeling when I make 155. Yeah. And what was the decision to drop down to 145? Because at 155, you were never really looked as a guy that was small uh, in that weight class. Yeah, no, I was dropped because I feel, uh, you know, I worked for UFC almost 10 years, you know. I, I, I really need some new challenge you know, for, uh, for my career, for my, myself, you know. And I make a choice together with my team. I think that's the best choice. Drop from 45 for look for some new challenges. Yeah, uh, and when you say new challenges, like what what exactly are you looking for at, at 145? Is it maybe to like refresh your career a little bit? Maybe some different matchups because you have fought most of the people at 155. Um, what exactly are you looking for? Exactly, like I said, it's a new challenge. I fought some new guys. I I, I don't fight the people want the, the the other guys for 155 because the most pipes say no. Fight me, one fit fight. I always open to fight everybody in the top ten. Uh, it's get hard to fight the people one fit five because I fought most of those guys, and in one forty five it's I'm new. You know, I fought nobody one one forty five, and I'm very excited. I feel that's a new begin for me. Yeah, and uh, and lastly. Um, what, what challenges do you think Dan Ige presents? And if you come out victorious on Saturday, where do you think that puts you in the division? Because, uh, you know, you are a, a big name dropping down. So usually that, that helps out as far as rankings is concerned. I'm so happy. First, I'm so happy to, to FC always give me some, some, some big challenge, you know, some FC give me a chance to fight against the best guys in the world. And this is the top 15, man. You talk about the, the top 15 in the world. He's one of the best. And I feel if I beat him, definitely uh, for my history in UFC, I have more than 22 fights in UFC right now, 23, my 23rd fight in UFC. If I beat him, definitely uh, I deserve the top five. And I have three more fights in my contract, man. I hope you have seen after this one, if I win, give me a top five, you give me a chance for the title shot. Thank you, Edson. Good luck. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Damon, go ahead. Taking the time, uh, obviously this move down to featherweight, you know, surprised a lot of us just because you've always been such a good lightweight and never seemed like you were giving up that much size. Would you say it's permanent or, or is it still an experiment just seeing how it goes, you know, this Saturday? Let's see how they go. I, you never know, you know, especially right now. It, it, but my goal right now is to stay 145. But I, I'm hope I'm a fighter, man. I'm hoping to fight 155. Depends if somebody give me some big names, you know. The people, there's not much guys I fought in 155. Give me one of those guys. Why not? I'm a fighter, man. I don't care. Or maybe go to 170. I don't care, man. Have you seen give me I'm ready? And Edson, you know, back in about you know requesting your release from the UFC, and then right after that we heard about a rumor of the Josh Emmett fight. I know that never ended up coming together. Now you got Dan Ige. What is your relationship with the UFC right now? I think the relationship is good because UFC give me a fight, you know. On that time, you know, I asked to left because I was so, so excited, so ready to fight. You know, I asked to fight in December. It's crazy, you know. I'm ready to fight in December, in December, January, February, March, and there's no fight. I was, come on, if you don't have a fight, just let me live. Let me, let me go. It's working, you know, for another company, but I think... The reality, I, I, I scream for a fight, you know. I really want to fight. I, 
I still love my job. I still love every moment, every second for for, for my job. And like I said, I feel it's a little bit, you know, I don't really ask it to last. I just ask for fight. And obviously, you know, Dan Ige is a great challenge. We've seen what he's done lately on his win streak. But when you look at the featherweight division as a whole, do you see a lot of intriguing I think people immediately would look at fights like Max Holloway and some of the other fights that are out there and imagine you in those scenarios and say, those would be great fights. Is that exciting to you as well, just to think about all the potential matchups you could face that would be new fights? Yes, of course, man. You see a couple of names like I imagine it. You know, me against Holloway, me against, you know, uh, Zumbi Korea, Korea Zumbi, or me against, you know, all the top ten, five guys. Imagine it. it's going to be a great fight, great war. That's making me very excited, working hard to come, the, come down to this division. Last question, Edson. You know, we know this fight's going to take place without an audience, without a crowd. Uh, you're one of those guys who, who famously has a lot of sound effects in your fights kicks uh how is it preparing for that part of it i mean obviously you know you fought with smaller audiences bigger audiences things like that but uh but how do you think you're going to approach that will it will it change anything in terms of your approach to the fight are you looking forward to it like how, how do you feel about fighting with no audience yeah it's going to be different but i work a lot you know i feel like in in, in my my training I train like that with not much people around and it's gonna be different definitely because i love you know I, I really love the people outside because like you said every time i throw something like a crazy noise everybody outside whoa oh it's make me you know more motivate to keep you hurt the guy it's gonna be different but i think but at the same time you know you go in the cage, it's just me, my opponents, and the, the referee is not changing. It's going to be the same. Thanks, Edson. Thank you. Next, we'll go to James Lynch with the score. James, go ahead. You talked about the cut to 45. Did you do a test cut before? Like, did you try and already make the weight already just to see if you could actually make it? No, not really. But you have to give me a long time to, to train very light. You know, like I said, I just, you know, I was, like I said, when I dropped from 55, if I had cut 10 pounds to 145, just stay 10 pounds lighter. And I feel the same thing, same thing, weight's going down and I feel great. I feel, I really feel great. Was there any difference in the camp, whether it was diet or maybe running a little bit more? How have you, you know, shed those extra 10 pounds or how are you going to do that? No, I, I it's my fight, my, my real fight to keep my weight high. I'm a healthy guy, man. I never did diet my life because I eat clean my whole life. And you guys never see me off, off shape. Never. My whole life. It was professional man i do everything right all the time it's so easy for me you know drop for 145 because like i said i do everything right who did you get to work with for this camp because we know a lot of the uh training camps you know it's with smaller groups now so who are some of your training partners yeah i, I train the american top team you have 1000 options in american top team that's why american top team is the best team in the world I have a lot of guys help me on this camp, and I'm more than ready for this fight. Absolutely. Was there anyone you worked with a little bit more, or was it just a variety of uh, training partners? Like I said, every time you bring some diff some some training partner different, it's good for me because if you train more than one time with some guy, you know who's coming. Every time he's try to change a little bit, but yeah, I'm ready. And you talked about challenges at featherweight. One of the things with Dan Ige, he's never been finished in his career. Do you look at that as a challenge that really excites you, potentially being the first fighter to finish him? Yes, definitely, definitely. He is a great fighter, man. You're talking about he's a top 15 featherweight in, in UFC. He's one of the best, definitely. I'm so thankful to, to always put myself against the best guys in the world. 
And uh, Damon referenced there uh, a potential fight with Josh Emmett, that there was there were some rumors floating around with that. Was that ever something that was offered to you? Was that matchup ever something on your radar? They talked to me about this fight. I'm always hoping for for fight, you know? I don't know what happened, but I'm always hoping for that fight. When my manager called me, he said, yes, of course, anytime. I don't know what, what happened. And then last question, uh, where do you feel like a win over Danny Gay would put you? Because he's got a really nice winning streak heading into this fight. And I would imagine that's going to put you, you know, nice in that in that top 10 as far as the featherweight division goes. Oh, man, if I win and fight against him, like you said, he's coming with a, a lot of straight wins. And I think for my history in UFC, for everything I make for UFC, for more, uh, so close to 10 years work for, work for UFC, I think if I win this fight, I deserve a top 10 and a top 10 on top five. I really deserve and get a title shot. My dream is still the same, be a UFC champ. Appreciate the time, Edson. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Alistair Bishop with MMA Republic. Alistair, go ahead. Thank you. Edson, how are you, sir, firstly? Very good. How are you, sir? Fantastic. Sending lots of regards from South Africa. It's in just, a, just a technical look at, at a guy like Dan Eger, who's got quite a healthy relationship with someone like Khabib Nurmagomedov. Do you expect him to try and imp, uh, implement a resting heavy strategy and, and, and really work a bit of pressure towards you? I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't worry about that. Just worry about what I'm going to do, you know? I really don't worry, don't care. I know if I go there, I give my best, I want to win this fight, and I really don't worry about him. And are you, are you confident that you will still carry an immense amount of power down to featherweight, even, even with a, a slightly bigger cut? I know you said you, you, you're very comfortable with the cut at the moment, but uh, how do you feel about the, the power going down another weight class? Yeah, I, I really feel the same. It's funny because I was... When I start training, I was scared to lose a little bit of my strength, lose a little bit of my speed. But it's the opposite. I feel my strength still the same, and my speed I get faster. Because of course, I, I, I'm lighter, and it's gonna be a surprise. I feel great. I'm in the training. I'm more than ready for this one. And has there been any? Uh, or, or let's say, what has been the most difficult part uh, about this training camp, obviously, with the situation going on? What has been the, the most difficult part for you? For me, it's not really difficult because, like I said, the American top team is the best team in the world. They do everything right in South Florida to make us train, you know? I don't stop training one second on this pandemic. You know, the, the world get crazy about the, the coronavirus, but the American top team, the people still working hard like always. And like I said, it's, it's normal camp, just one more camp. This is the different because you have to me three weeks ago, you know? You don't give him much time, like a 100% and focus in camp. But like I said, I always ready to go. And uh, last question, Edson, if, if you could have a dream featherweight matchup um, in, in your home of Brazil, who would that be? Uh, anybody in the top five. Anybody. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Edson, that's all we have for you today. Thank you. Thank you.